welcome to International. After a long hiatus, this week we're going to be looking at battles within the Israeli military. So over the past month, Itzhak Brak, a leading general from the Yom Kippur War of 73 to 74, and a man who was renowned for his cynicism, pessimism, but also being a hero of that war, turning it around at a time when it was thought that the Israeli military and nation would be overwhelmed by Egypt and Syria, had come out stating that Israel's military readiness had been worn down over a number of years due to specific factors. The first factor is that of battle readiness, being the idea that soldiers, even leading officers, are communicating from the front line and front line operations, including occupation operations using WhatsApp and several carriers and platforms, meaning that it's easy for opposition fighters or enemy agents to hijack and hack their communication lines meaning that Israeli soldiers are more likely to be spotted on the battlefield, putting at jeopardy covert missions against forces such as Hezbollah, as well as Hamas in the West Bank. Additionally, we have the issue of military supply. Now, of course, we all know about the relationship between the US military, the European Union, and the Israeli state, as well as the Israeli state's ability to create its own native military industrial complex through small investment bank projects and uh, SEOs. But on top of this, we've seen a real problem with the Israeli state being able to uh, manage the expectations of the Israeli military, especially when it comes down to the quality of equipment coming through. There have been huge advances in armoured vehicles, in tank technology, but when it comes to weapons that can help the Israeli military in close net fighting, this has come under huge amounts of pressure with officers, especially young officers, stating that they don't feel like they have the confidence to face up against fighters who are of the Hezbollah or Iranian-backed and trained militias who themselves have honed the concepts of guerrilla warfare. Itzhak Brat also stated that cutting the mandatory service from three years for young officers by four months will result in a shortage of up to 6,000 men for the IDF. Now this is critical, especially at a moment where we're seeing uh, huge amounts of pressure from Saudi Arabia and the GCC for Israel to deal with Iran, as well as this new relationship that's been forged between Trump and Netanyahu, the expectations on the Israeli military are sky high and are not being met, according to young officers, by the actual strategic uh, military and resource basis on the ground. This shortage will have huge implications for any future conflict, especially when we consider Israel's second war with Lebanon in 2006, which uh, some experts claim was a, a draw, but Hezbollah claims as a great victory, and many Israeli generals uh, state was a massive strategic loss. The final point is that of the inevitability of the drains of occupation. The Israeli state has historically always been very uh, innovative when it comes to creating military effectiveness, uh, its, its efficiency on the battlefield, as well as developing the technology to help its soldiers do what the state needs it to do. But fundamentally, we have an Israeli state which is busy continually expanding into the West Bank, uh, trying to defend the settlements, but also trying to project its power to, in its stated aims, defend against the expansionism of Iran. But the problem is, is that the Israeli state will increasingly come under pressure and strains of having these dual political missions and dual military missions. It's going to have to choose between what it concentrates on. It's all very well for its allies in the region, covert or outward allies, to state that the Israeli military should take certain actions. But as time passes, the Israeli political class is going to have to listen to the military class and actually focus on what Israel can actually do. It's going to have to choose between occupation and outward expansion. Itzhak Brick is no coward. He's no dove. He's certainly not a, a lily-livered pacifist. This is an experienced general who has for the past 10 years been tasked with uh, soldier feedback, finding out what the soldiers on the front line in Israel think, care about, and what they need. He's coming to the end of a decade-long term, responsible for taking care of those tasks. And for a man who many believe was traumatised by the Yom Kippur War, they would state that he's, of course, automatically 
ever going to be the cynic and people shouldn't listen to him. But he points to some real major problems within the Israeli military and political setup, and it would do well for many people in Israel to pay attention to Brick's analysis. Thank you.